Hello guys and welcome back to yet another video. Just before I go into anything, it is Christmas, uh, at the time of recording anyway. So before I start off, you know, Merry Christmas to you all and I hope you all have a Happy New Year. So uh, let's get in. Um, I'm not specifically going into my... <coughs> sorry. I'm not specifically going into what I promised on my series introduction, not in the order anyway. However, regardless, it is on there. And it's something I really want to get out of the way before I actually go into any of the modeling-oriented uh, tutorials. So, in this tutorial, uh, you might be able to have a little guess based on what you can actually see in front of my camera right now. We've got a really nice scene, and you can see it's got a nice sense of atmosphere, density, and all-round awesomeness. So, uh, yeah, you can see that it's raining at the moment, which really, really adds life to your scene. Um, uh, so I'm going to be showing you how to experiment with a few of the different environmental settings in uh, CryEngine. So um, first of all, I'm just going to delete my little rain node which I have here. It's completely irrelevant at the moment. So uh, I'm just going to quickly do something uh, off the side of my screen just to give you a little, uh, let's just say, shake. There we go. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we, we're in our scene, and we've got some pretty cool stuff going on. Uh, don't worry about me spawning over here, but over there, you can see we have got a tornado. Now, how cool is that? We've got a tornado in our game without any effort whatsoever. So I just want to point that out. CryEngine 3 has got a whole variety of weather settings that you can play around with really, really easily. Um, so I have shown you a few, so to speak, anyway. Uh, I have shown you the time of day settings previously, which allow you to change the time of the day, but once you start adding that with a bunch of weather settings, you can really do some cool stuff. So let's just go ahead and start off by going to over to our NTCs entities tab and you can see we've got the environmental uh, section over here and we can see we've got f a few different things rain come on that's pretty self-explanatory shake you don't really want to worry about that and we also do have tornado so tornado you just simply drag that in and boom you have a tornado however you may want to um, adjust that a little bit by changing a few of the different parameters that you have uh, you know, available to you. So we got a, a few main things over here. We got you know like cloud height. We've got uh, you know up up impulse, spin impulse, wonder speed. So let's just say wonder speed is going to be the speed that it moves around in. Uh, cloud height. You can probably guess what that is. Uh, so yeah. I'm not going to go into too much uh, about that just yet. I'm just going to delete my tornado and go for the thing that I really wanted to show you the most, which is actually rain. You drag that in and we've got some nice, lovely rain. However, you can see there might be a few uh, complications with what we've actually got in here. You can see we've got a lot of glossiness on the ground where we have got... Um, you know, just water uh, piling up. It'd be okay if you had something like concrete. However, it doesn't go down too well if you're actually using something like grass or mud because it just soaks in and it won't be laying on there. So let's just go down and look at the different parameters that we actually have available to us. So first of all, we've got amount. You can probably guess what this means. It's genuine, genuinely the amount of rain that we're going to have. Set it to 15 and God damn it, I would not want to be out there. So I'm just going to set this to something like free. You can see we've got clear rain. Uh, and, you know, if you can't see it, there's something wrong with you. It's nice and lovely. And boom. There, there is one uh, little concern that you may see right now. Is that it doesn't actually go over the entire level. And it will change the density. Let me just close that. Oop. I got completely on there, and it will change the density based on your location in the world. So, you know what, I'm just going to quickly delete my little spawn point over here, because uh, I believe in the last video I showed you how to create like linear spawning systems. So, delete that, go over here, and hopefully it should spawn me over. But yeah, as I zoom out and in, you can see uh, a lot changes in regards to the amount of rain. Uh, so down here we actually have a radius of the rain. So if I get in close, it's pretty high. Change it over here, you know, hopefully if I change this to 150, you know, you can see it over here. Zoom out, change this to 1000, 
and oh wait no that's one that's uh, 100 and yeah it goes pretty far out so just where you want to uh, you might want to check that as like one of your second options just to make sure that you've got rain going all over where you actually want it to go and like when you go running over here it's not going to be uh, you know gone okay so uh, I'm just going to turn that down because, quite frankly, the rain is uh, a little OTT at the moment. So I believe it was something like 15 by default. Okay, maybe not. Uh, but it's not too important. I'm just going to change this to around 50. That's more like it. So, yeah. Let's just change the color of the actual raindrops now. Uh, you know, the little things that are actually falling. You've probably seen them all. Uh, so you can see I've got my little color picker when I actually click over here. If I change it to blue... It's nice and strong, but it doesn't look very realistic. So I'm just going to give you all a little uh, push in the right direction in regards to uh, rain color. You can put it a certain color, but I would not advise doing it, you know, too bright. You really want to go on the whitish side, even if you're doing it on something like pink, and it will still look cool, okay? You know, I kind of contradicted myself there. It wasn't uh, white enough, but there we go. Yeah. A little bit more white, along the lines of white. you still got the nice faint aspect of pink. And it still genuinely works. So uh, I can change this to something like green if we've got acid rain. And it really helps you. Uh, if you've got like post-processing or something, you can use this to add to it if you're raining. And it genuine, uh, generally gives you a uh, somewhat more green overall effect. So, let's just change this back to a nice, lovely light blow, just the way I, I personally think it should be. Uh, I don't really like to play around with the color too much, as Cryingen's, uh, you know, rain looks pretty nice by default. Okay, so down here we've got a few different things. We've got fake glossiness. Uh, basically, fake glossiness is what we've got down on the ground where it's nice and shiny, but that isn't really the control that you want to play around with. Reflection is a uh, reflection amount is really what you want to be playing with. If I change this to 50, you can see it whacks the specularity up 10, f I like to you know, really high, and it's rather I repeat and really bright. And by default, it was set to one, and you can see there's a lot of reflection on the ground. So, since we're dealing with grass and mud and stuff like that, we're going to want it to be relatively low because, as you all know, uh, water will be soaked into the ground. So, let's just set this to 0 0.1, and that's more along the lines of realistic. Uh, yeah. So, I'm just going to change this up to 1 for a very good reason, actually. It's because I'm about to show you uh, how to change around uh, the puddles. So, you can see nothing really happens when you play around with numbers like that, but once you go high, you can definitely see the uh, tessellation change in those puddles. They are very clear, you can see them there, whereas if I change it to one, you just genuinely have one massive puddle, you can't see any puddling effects at all, you know, like uh, raindrops hitting on the ground. So I'm going to change this to something like 15, and boom, we've now got some nice, lovely raindrops hitting the ground, you can see it very, very clearly, and it looks pretty nice in my opinion. So I believe that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over uh, in regards to rain. Um, so I'm just going to end off the video here because it's, uh, you know, Christmas, everyone's got things to do. Well, I don't, but, uh, you know, I've got to be places. So uh, just try playing around with rain, tornadoes. There's also um, a way you can do lightning in CryEngine 3, so that's going to be something that you really want to look into uh, whilst I go on to making the next tutorial. That said, the next tutorial I do is going to be covering uh, sound in the CryEngine 3 SDK, uh, so we can have like nice lovely ambient volumes and add a little bit more, a little more sense of atmosphere and density so we can have things like birds and I don't know, whatever else we want to add in. So uh, I'm going to have to end off the video here. Thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and don't forget, Merry Christmas.